Oh, come on. You knew I'd have to talk about something like this if we're going to be talking about non-canon weird Doctor Who stuff. Doctor Screw is a 2006 porn parody series that was produced for the Adult Channel in the UK. The Adult Channel was, and still is, owned by Playboy, and is effectively a pay-per-view station. And like many pay-per-view stations, their content is greatly exaggerated. But having seen the content from these kind of channels, I can assure you you'll see more skin in Game of Thrones than you will on the likes of Playboy TV. In short, they're a bit of a scam. But the key here is advertising, and when it comes to trying to sell these things, these channels have form. A successful seller is the ancient art of the porn parody. Take a thing that people love and add dirty, dirty sex into the mix. Peanut butter, meat chocolate. Chocolate, peanut butter. Surprisingly, porn parodies were a slow grower in the industry, with the first documented porn parody being a tie between either 1973's Bat Pussy, a parody of Batman, or Snow White and the Seven Perverts. The genre would continue off and on through the 70s and 80s, before finally picking up in the latter half of the 80s, with titles such as Flesh Gordon, Edward Penis Hands, and The Penetrator. By the early 2000s, digital TV had all but cornered the market on being able to show you the kind of perverted nakedness that made other terrestrial channels like the BBC and ITV shrink and recede into a small ball in the corner. And porn parodies for adult specialist channels were their bread and butter. While little footage survives of the early days of adult television in the UK beyond officially released DVDs, there were a number of parodies around at the time, including porn versions of Shameless, Ashes to Ashes, and even reality TV shows like Big Brother. These would often have quippy titles like Gashes to Gashes or Big Bummer. They'd be made for about 20p an episode, and were 9 times out of 10 utterly dreadful from a technical standpoint. But the nature of these channels was to keep punters paying, so almost mechanically they'd release new content on an almost week-by-week -week basis. In fact, there are several horror stories of filmmakers and editors basically working round the clock to keep footage pumping out in order to keep these channels afloat. With the rise of the internet, these channels have shrunk significantly. Where once you'd find maybe 20 to 30 adult channels, now there are slim to none. And what's left is normally nothing more than a woman in the world's smallest lingerie chatting with a pay-by-the-minute number running at the bottom of the screen. Dr. Screw was not the first of these porn parodies, but it was one of the earlier efforts to be shot almost exclusively for UK television. It was written and directed, and pretty much almost everything else, by Paul Carter, who according to what information I could find, has only ever written this and... He's directed approximately four features, including this one. One of which is another parody called Tight Rider. I'll leave it up to you to figure out which TV show that one's riffing. It was also co-written by Craig Kennedy and co-directed by Sam Stonehill, both of whom don't have any listings on IMDb whatsoever and seemingly have little to no online presence. So whether this was their one and only stab at cracking the media industry or not, I can't honestly say. Dr. Screw follows The Doctor, played by Mark Sloan, an actor who's appeared in multiple softcore features, both parody and straight. And also, rather bizarrely, I discovered he'd worked multiple times with the experimental filmmaker Chris Cunningham, who produced the rather surreal and nightmarish short film Rubber Johnny. The Doctor's an alien who crashes to Earth while attempting to hunt his arch-rival, the Mistress. Yes, I know, and this was almost ten years before Michelle Gomez would step into the role. For committing time and space related crime? I think? It's never really made clear. So the Doctor crashes on Earth outside of a nightclub and needs to assume human form to better blend in. 
So he kidnaps the lead singer of a punk band, Mr. B. Nasty, and literally steals his skin. Whether this is an invasion of the body snatchers type deal, or whether he literally just ripped the guy's skin off is never made clear, but he is capable of firing light out of his eyeballs and mouth, and he speaks with an overly posh British accent, so go hero? Anyway, as the lead singer of a punk band, he draws a bit of attention to himself, particularly from a local newspaper journalist, Holly, played by Ellie Brooke, another actress whose IMDb page would make a nun reach for the cords of love, who pesters him until he reveals that he's an alien, which of course she doesn't believe, and after a while she offers to invite him to her home to get a big scoop interview. The Doctor then does some doctory things in her living room, and bada bing bada boom, the two have sex. Thus begins a series of adventures through time and space that predominantly consists of 7-10 to ten minutes of strange and sex-driven exposition, followed by 10 or so minutes of straight-up softcore shagging, usually chased up with a 3-4 to four minute outro. And I'm going to get this out of the way sooner rather than later neither of them are particularly very good. For a starters, the dialogue both outside of the sex scenes and within them are bland, flat and frankly cringe-inducing. While Sloane is probably the best actor in this series, and he does have a more than reasonable, if not somewhat generic, doctor quality, nothing can prepare you for his sex talk which includes lines such as Do tuck it. He quite literally oh crikeys his way through these scenes and it's quite painful to watch. Brooke, by contrast, is simply a poor actress. Her performance in this is totally lifeless and it really feels like she's reading off cue cards immediately behind the camera. On the effects front, I've found myself torn as well, for a very low budget early 2000s TV show, the CGI elements of this aren't terrible. In fact, the intro CGI is more than passable for a parody from the early 2000s. Even if the font used isn't all that great and the music's a bit flat. The practical effects throughout, however, are absolutely dire with Poundland rubber masks being used for aliens, and the best outfits that the local fancy dress shop could supply. It's clear to see how the budget was allocated here. The sex scenes themselves are frankly unappealing. Most have been shot with room ambient lighting, and if there were any proper lighting kits, then they were presumably switched off. Sex scenes are very difficult to light, and often rely on very bright, soft lighting to flatter the artists at work. This makes them look the best they can. These sequences are shot flat and barely lit. As a result, you see every wrinkle, pimple and crease in these sequences. They also sweat a lot, which is natural, but not particularly sexy. In somewhat of a saving mercy, most of the worst naughty parts are strategically covered up, the odd boner will creep into the shot in a blink and you'll miss it kind of way, but I genuinely feel sorry for the pundit who coughed up 8 to 10 pounds a night to see people not have sex and still be judged for it. The cinematography is flat, very basic, it has no real experimentation. When it comes to the sex itself, it's a bit more acceptable because you're working to the strength of your actors rather than your creative requirement. But the exposition sequences are just dull as dishwater, with only the odd performance or bit of CGI truly livening things up a bit. The direction, by contrast, isn't really all that bad, though. The exposition scenes are admittedly just a load of people standing around waiting to have sex, but sequences where cast members are on their own tend to actually work out rather well. It does quite a good job of mirroring some of the scenes that were quite well received from the first series of New Who, including a quite nice reference to the Doctor checking out his latest incarnation in Rose, and the sequence where Be Nasty gets abducted is ripped clean out of the Slitheen two-parter of that year. They also have parodies of the Autons further down the line, and there's even an episode that references the more futury stories like The End of the World and The Long Game. 
so it's clear someone on the cast and crew was actually watching Doctor Who. There's even small references like the Doctor being dressed similarly to how the then current Ninth Doctor would dress, the Doctor's TARDIS being a portaloo, or the fact that this Pawnee Doctor has his own sonic device, though it's probably for the best you don't ask him to scan you with it. The series was originally intended to be 13 parts long, but the adult channel only broadcast 11 of these, choosing to retain the final two episodes as part of a long out of print complete collection DVD set. Not only have these episodes not been torrented, but the cost of acquiring these two episodes far outweighs any urge to view them. My guess is that these episodes didn't go down particularly well with audiences. No pun intended. Or an issue with the sound that I noticed on a few episodes led to it being pulled due to technical issues. Either way, realistically, I think I can safely say that you've pretty much seen everything you need to see to understand this within the first three episodes. Highlights of these include the Earth being invaded by blow-up dolls, caveman sex, and Nazis. Because of course there's Nazis. The porn parody industry is currently in a bit of a golden age, with the This Ain't series literally ruining television and film left, right and centre. So in many ways it's interesting to look back on this genre and see how it evolved from its most basic elements, to the intricate affairs that we see these days. Doctor Screw is not a revolutionary piece of television but it's a cobble on the road to the sharper productions that are available today. Can I recommend it? Absolutely not. There's a trailer for it online, watch that and you'll have seen everything you could possibly need to see relating to the show. It's an interesting leap, but a dinosaur by modern standards. It left me wondering how it took until 2006 for them to finally make a serialised Doctor Who porn parody, and one so flat and lifeless at that. Oh, and this thing had its own commercial bumpers as well. Force a canny linguist.